I wanted to shadow Robert as a director because I'm I'm a filmmaker. Uh huh. And uh, it was COVID, so I had no work and everything was shut down. But he was making a movie, and mm -hmm. I was like, well, the only way I can get on set is if I'm working on the movie. What's the call? I'm calling to report a bank robbery. Is this crime currently in progress? Today. See that guy on the bench? Do you have a lighter? That guy's up to something. It's very hot today. It's like a furnace. It's, hot. it's like a furnace. There's a safe deposit box. Is that the target? Box 23. I'm glad it's been uh a I'm crazy week. I can imagine. I'm glad you had the time now to to make it happen too. So uh, you know, all is settled and taken care <laughs> of in that case. A lot of stuff going on. I just uh, interviewed that another I think it's releasing the same weekend as you guys are with uh the book club movie. So I just had the oh, interview. That's that. amazing. Yeah. <laughs> so, You're busy, busy, busy. <laughs> definitely. Big release day, right? I mean, that that whole Mother's Day weekend is gonna be huge. A lot of Crazy. everything for mom you got the well i was telling um my dad i was like okay you have to get your tickets to guardians of the galaxy for this friday the fifth and then uh -huh. next friday is hypnotic and i was just like i can't believe i'm saying that i can't believe i have two movies opening like back to back fridays that's unbelievable how cool yeah. is this? i mean this is the official start of the summer movie season so there yeah, you go you're kicking, kicking it off, it off. Bonnie. you're kicking off the <laughs> summer movie season <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's just me <laughs> yeah there you go <laughs> hey you're doing something well you know what i mean so it's a good thing when you're trying to arrange tickets and you know viewing times for things yeah. <laughs> done well well uh where are you currently so right now today i'm in los angeles mm -hmm. today so i'm guessing that you might not be there for too long today today um so hopefully going to con uh mm -hmm. to go see hypnotic that's um, gonna be super cool what a what a premiere that right to have it there it's kind of mind-boggling <laughs> that's unbelievable uh yeah, you know, it's it's funny because uh, my sister is very uh, good friends with the producer on this film, James Portalisi. Oh. oh, my God. I love James. He's, yeah. a, he's a good friend. He was a great producer. There you go. I've been hearing about this film for a while since going back to last year. You know, <laughs> a lot of uh, conversations that James and my sister had about the film and the process of it all. So, uh mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, it, was, um, it was a big process. I think yeah, you guys of, shot it in uh, Texas, right? right? Yeah, in Austin. There you go. Pretty cool location to shoot. It was so fun. It was so fun. Well, I, I don't know how much you know, but I did uh, Robert's Rebel Without a Crew, uh, the docu-series a few years ago. Uh-huh. So I actually uh, shot my own film in Austin. So it was like going back. Oh, wow. What a full circle moment. Yeah, it was really amazing. Oh, that's so cool. I, I mean, I saw the preview, but you, you have a, there's a big scene involving you and uh, Bill Fitchner there too, right? I mean, <laughs> stuff scene. is going down. And, and I, see your, happening. I see your top coming off too in the trailer. Bonnie is like the selling point of the film right there. And something happens right after it. So yeah, there's a lot. Well, you know, I can't tell you what happens, but uh -huh. there's more to it. Okay. It's well, good nothing. to know there's more to it. Nothing in Hypnotic goes the way you think it's going to go. Uh -huh. I love those sort of movies. The mind bend, the mind twist, right? Exactly. I can't give away any uh, secrets. We've been sworn to secrecy. But, uh... Fair enough. I don't want any secrets because I want to see it and experience it, you know? So, uh, like I said, I'm very excited about this film. <laughs> I, personal connection to it and hearing so much about it for a long time. It's That's finally amazing. coming out, so that would be great. I also, I love your sign in the back. Did you have that custom made? Yeah, I did actually. It's awesome. And, then, and I have the uh, cardboard cutout covering up the, the cables too, to it. So <laughs> a one, it two punch. Like the, uh, the font from True Romance. Not the font, but like the color. Uh -huh. I had it. I picked the font too. Uh, I got it on Amazon. I typed in like neon what? lights and it led me to like this neon lights thing, uh, website that customizes you. You can create your font and you write out the, the thing and they mailed it and it looks fantastic. It's so. amazing. It looks fantastic. I want one. I yeah. 
space back here. I need Super the cool. You can choose the size. It's like I went for this is pretty big, actually. It's like takes up a big chunk of the really? wall in a background, but you can choose like a smaller one, a bigger one. You pick your it's very customizable to whatever you want. And there's That's like amazing. dozens of fonts and uh, colors and styles. So uh yeah, let's not talk about hypnotic. Let's just talk about these the, the font, yeah. because this I'm is very... like hypnotic. There's more to the story too of the <laughs> of that. No, that's awesome. I, yeah. I really love neon signs. For uh, a short that I made, I used, uh -huh. like, uh, I had Josh Stifter, who was one of the other Rebel Without a Crew filmmakers, he made a like neon sign as our credits. So at the end of the movie. Oh, when, uh, that's was, super cool. Yeah. Neon always looks good, Bonnie. And no matter what, it's so catchy. You know, it's a rule. Yeah. Neon always looks good. Yeah, it always like no matter what color you can do this like baby blue that I did or the pink or whatever it is, it just always pops. Yeah. Pops and especially with good font, it like it's memorable. Okay, so where are you? I'm, I'm in, in Chicago. Like, you're in Chicago. I was just in Chicago. Love. Oh it. really? Yeah. It was. What were you doing out here? <laughs> um, I was working on Chicago Med. Okay, well there we go. That's this. This is filmed here. So for those that it don't know, so fun. I hadn't spent much time in Chicago before that, and it was like the food was great. I was going to museums. I went to uh -huh. Art Institute, but then I went to the Surgical History Museum, which was super dark and awesome. Have you uh -huh. ever been there? I have not been there, but I've heard a lot about it. That's one actually. Yeah. I need to. I live here, and I still haven't seen it, but. <laughs> Big recommend. <laughs> there you go. I, I, I've heard a lot about it from friends that have gone. So you see, that's something when you're local, you don't even experience something. Yeah. You're saying like, oh, yeah, we have it in the back door, you know, <laughs> that sort of thing. Oh, that's so cool. So you had the Chicago experience. You took it all in. Uh, you had the food, which is like a, a trademark here. It was awesome. It was awesome. I went to Joe's. So fancy. Oh, good place. <laughs> uh huh. You knew the good spots. People would either you, you're good at researching or people would nudge you in the right direction. Yeah. Uh, it was a little bit of both. I have family there. So they knew about oh, Joe's. Perfect. And yeah. A lot of Eventbrite being like, what can I do by myself in Chicago? Museums. Uh huh. No, that's they, there's some outstanding museums here. Uh, for uh, definitely all sorts of uh, the science and industry and and everything. The art museum. It's just uh, very cool, and it's pretty centrally located in the city too. So perfect. <laughs> How long were you here for? Um, I was there for all of January. Oh and wow! Then so another week in February. Okay, so the coldest times of the year. Yeah, okay. standing. yeah. No, everybody kept being like, we're so sorry. And it was, <laughs> well, A, it wasn't that cold while I was there. True. It got colder later on. Actually. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, mid February yeah. is when it really the, the freeze and chill hit. So actually, we had a pretty mild January, too. Yeah. So January and February were not bad. And then also, there was just this sense of like, oh, it's something different. Like, oh, I'm going to go ice skating. I'll go see the Christmas lights. Like, uh -huh. it's very, um, I mean, I'm sure if you're there every winter, you're like enough already. But uh, no, but they, they really do. it. This town, unlike L.A., because I've lived in L.A. too. So I know, like, you can't tell when there's a holiday in L.A. or anything. It's like, oh, it's Christmas time. Like, I guess if I go to the Grove, I'll see something. But exactly. it's like everywhere, like lights and trees, like they really go out like around it must be like a midwest thing but like they like to celebrate holidays and different things like you know it's a holiday you know what yeah, time of the year it's right it's... i was like wake up and uh it's you know five o'clock in the morning and the snow is falling and i was like this is so romantic i love it here <laughs> there you go but then you don't want to go outside <laughs> because... no i did i did i like kept trying to get my cousins i was like let's build a fire and roast marshmallows out in the snow and they were like what <laughs> no we do that in the summer <laughs> i love that the charm of uh, uh where are you from originally then so i grew up in connecticut and south carolina oh interesting oh, okay yeah northeast and a little bit of the south there okay yeah, I got, you got a I got taste of flavor it. everywhere and how long have you been in la um i have been here since 2008 okay so a good good amount of time to, to finally get used to and find your footing i feel like yeah. la is such a it takes a few years to just get settled in you know with everything it's so overwhelming it's such a big city and especially yeah, everything's so spread out i feel like i'm i still i'm like i don't know what happens in venice <laughs> like like it's i don't think anyone living in venice even knows so 
Good point. <laughs> there you go. Well, that's fun. Uh, actually, today we have a decent day here, so it's like mid fifty. I can watch you shoot this big action movie. And he was like, Bonnie, why did you do that? You could have just asked me. And he was like, come, you know, hang out behind Video Village and like, I'll talk you through what we're doing. So I was on set the first time watching him shoot the stuff with Ben and Elise, and he was talking me through what he was doing with visual effects. Wow. And then I came back to LA and I came back to Austin to shoot more um, extra stuff, but also continue watching him. Uh -huh. And then while I was on set, one of the actors um, tested positive for COVID. Mm. And on Monday, he came to set and he saw me and he mistook me for her. And he was like, oh, my gosh, was it a false, false positive? Like, you're here. This is great. And I lowered my mask. and I was like, no, 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 Robert, it's it's me, Bonnie. And he was like, oh, I thought you you were this actress that we have to recast right now um you're an actor do you do you want to audition and so then right then and there on set he pulled me behind video village gave me the the lines and was like okay let's read i'll put you on tape send it over to casting and so like ben's on set bill fickner's on set all the producers are there they're shooting i'm on an hour and 53 minutes of sleep because i just flew in from la to you know redo this observing i'm like wearing a hoodie and he was like do you have any like other clothes and was like no <laughs> this is this is it uh -huh. um and so we read and then i you know I, I went back home and i was like i don't know like that was an amazing experience i got to read with robert i, yeah. I got a chance to audition for the movie but like tomorrow I'll, I'll continue doing the extra work and you know observe him while he's shooting these big action scenes mm -hmm. which was you know why i was there a lot of action scenes too from when it looks of it so i mean it was all action and it was yeah. great because i've only made low budget things so i haven't had the opportunity to observe like what it's like to shoot with four cameras and a helicopter and like cars that are exploding and turning over and like vfx at that level and then i got home that night and i was getting text messages from the hair department and the costume department being like okay can you come in tomorrow like do a costume fitting I had no idea how big the part was. Uh -huh. I like I thought maybe it would be one day of work. It was five days of work. It was stunts. My first day on set, it was just a scene with me and Ben. Uh -huh. was, what is happening? <laughs> so unbelievable. Hey, yeah, did they need it to replace an extra then in that case? I don't know what happened. They lost yeah. an extra, okay. No, no, no. <laughs> wow. Maybe amazing what a whirlwind you know what i mean what a hypnotic experience no oh, intended. it was hypnotic <laughs> wow that is unbelievable that is such a cool story you know what i mean you see being at the just being somewhere being at the right place at the right time and and being available look what things can happen you know i think it's a great message to actors too you know um I, I think it's like present. showing up, just showing up, being yeah. there, being on sets all the time. But I also was like, thank goodness I'm prepared. You know, yeah. like this mm -hmm. is the opportunity. This is the totally. Chance. 
and the stakes were so high and I was cold reading with this two page scene and you know, no time to work it. And I was just like, okay, well, thank God I'm always in class. Thank goodness I'm training. Thank goodness I'm like mm-hmm. ready when the opportunity happens. But- That's preparation meets opportunity right there at its finest, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's like a backup quarterback. The the starter gets injured. Exactly. And bam, you're ready to go. You know, you know the playbook. Let's do this. Exactly. It's like you know, be be the best understudy. Be be in training all the time. Yeah, it, oh, it really you got surprising. so much, and and the the lessons. I mean, imagine just working behind Robert and watching him do his work too. I can imagine that just like a wealth of information there too. It was invaluable. I mean, because yeah. also while I was there, he would be like, oh, like, this is what I'm doing. Like, this is why I'm setting up the camera like this or, you know, so so I got to do both. It, it was amazing. That's so cool. Yeah. Wow. What a cool, what a cool, you literally had an experience in front and behind the camera, you know, yeah. literally. <laughs> wow. Was it different than jumping? Because you kind of start off just shadowing Robert, but then jumping in in front of the camera. How, how did that perspective, then he's giving you directions and stuff. How did that change? It was the most terrifying thing I've ever mm. done. Like, like it was ha- having an out of body experience. And I was like, I, but it, am I dreaming? Is this really happening? Okay. <laughs> so like he'd be talking, Bill would be talking, they'd have the four cameras set up and I would just be like, okay, listen to what he's saying, like be present, focus. So like two things were happening at mm-hmm. the same time, trying to make sure that I was doing everything that was being asked of me and that I was focusing and not panicking and just being like, okay, have fun, listen, uh, take it all in, enjoy this. And it was awesome. That's so cool. Wow. Yeah, that's a lot to take in, especially kind of uh, unexpectedly, you know, how it all out of, you know, you don't have much time to prepare in that case. It's all moving in, in, in that point. I mean, moving and also him being like, OK, like, so what you're going to do is like you're going to have this scene and then you're going to get hypnotized and then you're going to walk out in front of traffic. At, like it just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And I was like, yep, got it. Already. <laughs> You had to be. You got to roll with the punches in that case. You know what I mean? Oh, that's outstanding. I love that. Uh, yeah. That whole thing, that the journey that you were on part of this production. It's just unbelievable uh, <laughs> to see. And, you know, how much tough was it? You got shot, like, actually in the pandemic, right? When it was like, you know, there is a lot of uncertainty there, too. Was that even just even the setting of the location? What was Austin like? Kind of... Uh, it was a weird in a sense because you've worked before you've you've shot things you've uh, acted in things and working at that point in period that's that's so different I could imagine and and unique to its own way. Yeah, you know it's funny. Uh, we were outside a lot and mm-hmm. everybody was being uh, tested all of the time and masked, so they had a great rhythm and mm-hmm. and like set felt really safe and good and comfortable. But Robert also, he moves so fast that he was mm. able to do a lot of French hours. So like we would start, shoot a 10 hour day, you know, have food delivered to set. And he was wrapping by four o'clock in the afternoon. Wow. So like things were moving really fast. And um, yeah, it, it felt very safe. And they were just doing a great job managing mm-hmm. during COVID. Like, yeah, I want. Yeah, I wonder. Like, you know, curious. Like, like, there's a lot of at least from what I saw in the trailer. There's a lot of uh, daylight in this, so it seems like a lot of it was shot during kind of the day instead of usually expect thrillers like that kind of be a night shoot. Always you get that sort of correlation with movies of that, uh, you know, kind of genre to be always like darker yeah. at night. But this seems like it's kind of drastic too when you see it because like oh you see all these explosions like in daytime too, right? Yeah, yeah, I think um, Robert was saying that he wanted to make a hypno, uh, a uh, Hitchcock type thriller, and so I think he's like going back to Psycho and the birds and these things that were shot outdoors during the day, like things happening in your daily life that are actually yeah terrifying and confusing. It's, it's cool. Like, it's different. You know, you're kind of not used to it as, as a viewer, kind of visually like thrown off, like oh wow, <laughs> you know, 
it's a different perspective, even though you, you don't think about it usually, yeah. you know, it's kind of subconscious thing, but it, it's cool. It's, it's a, it's a nice choice and move there, but by a very creative director. So yeah, it was so fun. Wouldn't expect less. Uh, what have you been working on since? I mean, since, I mean, this is finally coming out, uh, you know, obviously filmed a little bit back. Yeah. Um, yeah. So there's been some time. Uh, yeah. There's a bunch of stuff coming out. Um, so yeah, that's a good thing. But, there you go. Um, on Friday, uh, there two days from now, is Guardians of the Galaxy Volume yeah. 3. There's a small part, but dream come true. Like James Gunn was amazing. It got to have a really funny, like, bucket list um scene are you gonna be tough to recognize in uh, like paint and costume or whatnot oh okay i'll be looking out for you bonnie (laughs) (laughs) i yes and you know what i can say i will be tough to recognize there will be a lot of paint there you go okay i think everyone's covering paint and everyone's got a cool looking outfit you know not many humans like you know chris pratt might be one of the the very few here on screen And then, um, so there's a couple of other things. Uh, there is a, a new little indie thriller uh, starring Megan Fox called Johnny and Clyde. That's, that's right. I've heard about it. Yeah, I, yeah, I've seen the press releases for it too. How okay? That's interesting there too. Yeah, so that's coming out May fifth as well. And uh, oh God, it, literally happened. May is your month. Okay. I don't know what's happening, um, but that was crazy because I got to set and I was like. I'm so excited to meet Megan Fox, you know, because uh-huh. I had a scene with Megan Fox. And then we got there and they were like, oh, no, 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 Megan's wrapped out. We shot all her stuff first and now we're shooting everybody else's stuff. Oh, wow. So I had to like play the scene imagining Megan while there was nobody there. And I was like, okay, this is wild. Like I'm doing a scene with Megan Fox and I'm never going to meet her. Uh, how does it happen how do you do a scene they put like a tennis ball or something on a stick they, and- they were just like imagine she's there and i was like oh okay uh i'm an actor i guess i imagine yeah did he i guess they like what they superimpose her scene onto it right later on in just editing just editing yeah like wow like, the, the the magic of editing you probably won't even know you know uh no, when no, you watch no. it um, and then I just shot a, um, a noir here in Los oh, Angeles okay. with uh, Kathleen Turner and this wonderful new actress named Sakai Abini. Um, so we shot that here in March, I think. Oh, wow. So just wrapped it, basically. Yeah, just wrapped that. So that's going to be um, edited. And I, I don't know what they're they're doing with it, if it's uh-huh. going to festivals or, or theatrical release, but it was so good. It's based on a short story by the author Janet Fitch, who wrote uh, White Oleander. Oh, wow. It's like feminist, noir, um, Kathleen Turner plays this great, like almost like Sunset Boulevard type character. Um, Interesting. Wow. Uh, did you have a bigger role in that one or a small role? Uh, yeah, no, I um. So I play, uh, the, the whole thing is set I don't know how much I can say about this um, in uh, an acting class and uh, follows this young woman as she gets embroiled in, in crime with uh, Kathleen Turner and um, Jackie Earl Haley, who oh, also wow. happens to be in hypnotic. That, um, and, that's, and, uh, and, there you uh, go. <laughs> her like best friend and uh, acting class partner so that that's a fun one wow there's a lot of moving parts here too you know it's all all happening yeah oh that's only okay you can you can go back and watch that on peacock yeah chicago yep exactly i mean i don't know we're in like season what 10 or more i I know i was it's it's season eight episode 17 no one to hold them no one to fold them there okay i'll check it out yeah. I try to keep, oh, I can't keep up with Chicago Fire, PD, and, uh, you know, and, and Med, because there's, it's just, ecosystem. It's, a, it's literally a whole thing. I mean, it's yeah. like, you miss one episode, then you're like, oh, no, I'm too behind. And then, you, you have know. to, like, block off Wednesday nights and be like, I'm dedicating three hours to this. Every it's week. the Chicago Wednesday night. Yeah, that, that's what it, they, they labeled that. It was like, yeah. back to back to back, you know, so. Viewing parties. 
that's there you go i mean that's that's our own here we're proud of those shows <laughs> here so it's locally made too yeah. uh, you you shot it did you shoot it on the streets though or at cinespace uh yeah. that student yeah so so matt is almost entirely on stages uh, okay yeah because i know a uh, pd kind of goes around town and i've auditioned yeah. for it too by the way oh so, yeah. that's awesome yeah yeah I've had as you much. should <laughs> totally yeah that's that's like goes on around town i think i've auditioned for all three of them didn't get it. once it was down to me and someone else and <laughs> they got it out so uh uh, oh, but well, yeah, I, I have my fingers crossed for you. Thank you. I'm sure you're nice coming up. <laughs> That'd be amazing. Yeah, it's great. It, it was a great experience. It's a space. It's it's a cool space. They're evolving. They're making it bigger and bigger, right? Did you enjoy shooting in that that space? I loved everything about Chicago. I mm. loved men. I loved all the people. I loved the weather. I loved Cinespace. <laughs> like, I don't know what kind of magic, but like there was something in the water and I was like, I'm sold. I love Chicago. Uh -huh. <laughs> no, that crew's been together for so long. These people, it, it's like literally like a family environment for sure. It's you know, family, everyone was so nice and so welcoming. It was just a great experience. The actors were great. The crew was great. Chicago was very welcoming, except for one. now and i know mm -hmm. everyone's job i know everyone's role totally. I talk to anybody and it, it it helps to be a better actor when you're like oh i'm very familiar i'm very comfortable like i know what this grip is doing i know what this lighting technician is doing i know yeah. how the camera is operating suddenly you can be like oh what what's my frame and you understand a lot of different things about how it's being edited together and what's going to be used in the cut um yeah yeah it's it's really i I think that's part of why the busyness, like the more I was directing, the more I started getting acting jobs. And I, mm -hmm. I, I don't think that was, that's a coincidence. Not at all. You know more, you're more aware. It makes you more hireable. And, uh, you know, it just, yeah, it just helps in every aspect. You know what I mean? To know the, the workings of everything. Cause you, it makes their job easier too. You know, when yeah. we don't have to repeat to you multiple times or something like that, you know, knowing that secondhand, huge and it's also just fun like exactly totally. what you said if, if you have an audition great but then if you don't have an audition to be working on a script and making something with your friends like mm -hmm. you're engaged you're creative you're making things and in these days you have every opportunity to do so there's so much available with with just like equipment and anything like that you know what i mean that you create on your own yeah it's absolutely incredible yeah no, it's it's taking advantage of the opportunities and and the surroundings that you have, you know, and that's that's the key, too. And and of course, always being at the right place at the right time and being good. So you see, when when you're helpful and good, people remember you too. So that's a, that's a big thing. It's always about relationships too in this industry. So uh, making good impressions leads to opportunities. Yeah, making good impressions. I mean, I think doing it all, understanding that we're in this long marathon together and mm -hmm. you're making friends and you're collaborating, people are going to be high and they're going to be low and you just keep 
keep trucking. <laughs> there you go. Before I wrap, uh, what do you like to do for fun? What are some hobbies and interests that, that Bonnie likes to partake in when, when not being creative here in the acting and you know filmmaking world? Besides going to the Museum of Surgical History. <laughs> Besides that, that's one <laughs> tidbit about you I picked up on. Yep. Um, I love to get outdoors in nature. So, mm. you know, surfing, ocean, uh, hiking, just, just whatever is natural. Mm -hmm. um, I have a, an, I'm really bad, but really like oil painting. Oh, like, okay. That's... Past, and I'm like, ah, this, there's no future in this, but it's very meditative. Yeah, as long as you find use for it, you know, and yeah. calm with it. Yeah. Doing, doing things that I'm not good at, um, you know, just for fun and cooking. I love to cook. Okay. What's uh, a dish? What's a dish you're proud of that you'd make if you're inviting people over? Lasagna. Oh, you know? so you can't go wrong with lasagna. It's such a good choice. Lasagna. Yeah. <laughs> it's tough to make though. A lasagna is a process. You've got to, you know, just do it a lot of times. And then once, mm -hmm. once you do it, it, it becomes, it becomes easy, but it's a long process. You know, you have to have like two or three days for lasagna. Yeah. Did you learn it from scratch or multiple attempts or? <laughs> well, it's interesting. I, um, you know, my family is from Southern Italy. So uh -huh. I was making, uh, you know, a, a sort of Neapolitan lasagna. And then in the last couple of years, I've been starting uh, doing like a Bolognese lasagna. Uh. Even more involved and takes more time. <laughs> of course. Yeah. And then like making the pasta yourself. That's a whole nother step. Uh-huh. Wow. So you do everything on your own. There's no, no shortcuts here. No, it's got to it's got to be slow cooked for days. I, I I at some point I need to try this lasagna. Okay, come come to LA. Yeah, absolutely. I'm I'm such a big lasagna lover, by the way, too. So this is. I know I can only like afford to eat it for like dietary reasons once or twice a year, though, because it's just yeah all butter. It's oh, so much butter. It's so filling and heavy too, but good. <laughs> well, that's good to know, Bonnie. So you, you can uh, cook a thing or two and definitely uh, mean a dish of lasagna. So there yeah. it is. So, so if this whole Hollywood thing doesn't work out, if, you know, if chat GPT takes all our jobs, I'll be out on the street <laughs> selling slices of lasagna. <laughs> I'll be there for it. lasagna right. truck. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Go. I've been like, I've got a little hand truck, like just uh -huh. get you a slice of lasagna. <laughs> that's the backup plan. There's options, you know? So see, that's what I mean. Having multiple skill sets. Yeah. <laughs> you never know. You never know in this industry, but it uh, seems like you're always finding your way. So that that's uh, that's a good thing there, you know? And um, being curious and, you know, and um, being open-minded uh, is a, is a really good thing too. And uh, yeah. leads to a lot of creativity. I agree. I agree. Right, well, well good, good luck. With yeah. everything. <laughs> That's right. Uh, this was such a blast talking to you, Bonnie. So I learned good. a lot about you <laughs> and uh, you have a lot of projects coming out. May is your month. Like, you know, they have, uh, this has got to be claimed as the Bonnie month for sure. <laughs> I'll tell them. <laughs> tell them. It's like just weekly releases, you know, and uh, yeah. things nice. are going really well. So <laughs> the family better open up their schedule to see a lot of your films coming up. I'll tell them. I'll be like, you got to go to the theater. Yep. We're back. <laughs> We're back for sure. Back. And I, I'll I'll be catching up on, uh, you know, the Chicago shows and, and making sure I catch your episode too. Okay. So uh, thank you, thank and I'll be on the lookup. Look I'll tell them they better book you. <laughs> that's right hey yeah. <laughs> i've been coming close to it like at some point you know it's gonna happen i, have, I, <laughs> I gonna guess so I, I'm, I'm always so hopeful and optimistic in that way right yeah you should be that's the thing yeah you it's should. like there's a lot of worse things in life you know and it's like i think this sort of stuff is like it, it's it's you know it, it's it's just a cherry on top of the cake you know the, the sort of thing to do what to do this sort of thing you know to play for a living uh, in a way that's, that's a pretty cool way. You know, it's, it's fun. It's not even work for the most part, you know, exactly. you look at real yeah, jobs of people digging ditches and all that. So, Oh no. I mean, like by the time you actually get to do the job, I'm just so grateful. I run around and I'm like, can you believe they're paying us for this? This mm -hmm. is amazing. It's wild. It's, it's wild. You know, to get there. That's the yeah. work. It's the journey, you know, and, and I feel like once you open one door, you kind of start opening up one after another. It's it's a it's just getting to that door. 
than hope getting that door open. Like, I'm here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, Is you, you make it there? known. You make it known, Bonnie. <laughs> you know, even behind a mask, Robert recognized. So <laughs> there you go. It was so fun. Well, thank oh. you so much for having me. This, this is, is so cool. Like, I'm yeah. I'm glad we made this happen and uh Hopefully I see you next time in person. That'd be great. Yeah, no, I'll let you know next time I'm in Chicago. Come to LA. We're uh, we're playing May 12th. So I'll tell James. There you go. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm planning to be there uh, this uh, this summer, you know, moving back. To, listen, I, I came back to Chicago. I'm from here originally, but I came back here when the pandemic started. Yeah. Um, and my stuff is still in storage in LA, by the way. Oh, no. It's been a while. I need to get it out and, and go get a place back in there. So I have all the furniture and everything. Yeah, ready you're ready to, to roll. <laughs> yeah, I'm ready to roll. <laughs> so I have more stuff there than I do here, pretty much. Well, uh, we can wait until the writer's strike is over. Well, yeah, that's another thing, too. Hopefully that uh, that gets settled, but yeah, yeah there needs to be Fair stuff contract. written because if you don't have stuff written, you get nothing made in that way. Yeah, yeah exactly. We need but I'll writing. be around. I'll holler at you. All right. It was so nice to meet you. Thank you. You too, Bonnie. Me. This was great. All right. Bye-bye. Talk soon. Bye-bye.